very important for us to start giving assistance wherever Ukraine finds it necessary. And of course, we coordinate with our partners within NATO, the European Union and beyond. And I'm also very happy that this conference today is a starting point for us to take uh, long-term action because we need security guarantees for Ukraine. And for that purpose, they need well-trained armed forces. That's a challenge for the future. We have to take care of that. And it's very good that this conference today gives this signal to Ukraine. We have given a lot of support uh, regarding mortars, uh, regarding anti-aircraft systems. We always support wherever there is a need, wherever we identify a need. And we coordinate with our partners. And this is what we will continue to do in the future. German policy is always based on not going it alone, but coordinating with our allies and our partners. And that is why, at a very early stage, we have delivered whatever was possible from the inventory of Bundeswehr. It was about anti-aircraft uh, missiles. We always uh, coordinated before delivering. And this is what we are going to do, whatever the Ukraine needs and whatever we have agreed together with the, our allies, we will deliver. And we are also going to cooperate with our friends from the United States and uh, our Dutch partners regarding uh, how it's a training. And this is always the task. This is our strength, to do it together. And this is what Putin felt all the time. Ukraine is not alone. It has the support of so many states. That's the important signal. Currently, we do support, uh, as regards training to use modern artillery systems, the uh, Dutch partners are assisting in uh, giving training regarding how it's a use. And uh, we are going to talk to our allies what more we could do together. In the medium and long term, we must make sure that Ukraine has a well-equipped, well-trained army. We are going to make our contribution to that. Ever since the war began, Germany has been delivering weapons and to Ukraine, and we have supported the Ukraine a great deal. We have uh, delivered things from our inventories. When this was no longer possible, we found an agreement with industry. Ukraine orders we will pay a modernization initiative uh, will be uh, stepped up to two billion. We have also uh, focused on multilateral exchanges so that wherever there are inventories, those goods could be delivered to Ukraine so that the Ukrainians can continue their courageous fight. And uh, Slovenia, for instance, is one of the uh, uh, exchange partners, and we help them to build up their inventory. This is uh, rapid support, and here we can say we are a reliable partner at the side of uh, Ukraine together with our allies and partners. I said clearly today that wherever there is an identification, what else the Ukraine needs when it comes to drones, when it comes to anti-aircraft system, there we have taken decisions and uh, we have received positive reactions and responses.
We are constantly monitoring all the requirements uh, that were given to us by Ukraine. We analyze the situation, we take decisions. This is what we did when it comes to uh, the Gepard type anti aircraft tank. We do that for anti tank mines, and uh, we have done that ever since day one. This is the way in which we work. We first analyze and then we take decisions together with partners and allies. There would always, uh, was always uh, a, an alert uh, and uh, a danger that we might become a party to the war when delivering weapons. How about that? We must make sure that neither NATO nor we as Germany become a party to the war. This would have devastating consequences. We have to prevent a further escalation, but the number of weapons that we deliver is not the only thing that is decisive. It is decisive for us to be in close coordination with each other, and that is why we take very moderate steps and we take very responsible decisions so we can make sure we do not become a party to that war, but clearly give our support to Ukraine. We have decided it is now important to focus on anti-aircraft systems. This is what we can do with our Gepard tank, and this is precisely on the list uh, that, that the Ukraine has given us. And this is what we uh, make possible now together with uh, our partners. Thank you very much. And we heard there from Germany's Defence Minister Christine Lamprecht confirming the delivery of anti-aircraft aircraft systems to Ukraine. She was talking um, about the fact that Germany has always co coordinated with its partners and then delivered what was necessary to su support uh, Ukraine in the war against Russia. And she uh, put a great focus on the reliability of Germany as a partner to Ukraine uh, in, in this war. And I'd like to bring um, in Michaela Kufner now, our chief political um, editor. Um, Michaela, as we just heard there, um, Christine Lamprecht was really focusing on the fact that Germany works with its partners. It can be relied upon. It's there for your, Ukraine. But in fact, how much of a surprise was it that this announcement was made today? It was a bit of a surprise, um, but I would like to stress that to the outside world, this is Germany giving in to pressure, um, both from Ukraine, its allies, also within NATO, um, also who have already delivered heavy weapons and tanks like the Czech Republic, for instance. Internally, this is nothing short of a paradigm shift when it comes to how the Bundeswehr acts and how the German government acts in terms of actually handing over weapons to any party that is part of a conflict. And the um, reason given over the past couple of weeks for not delivering particularly those tanks um, that Ukraine so desperately called for was uh, that uh, Germany was coordinating with its partners, and that's where we come back to that point, and making sure it actually makes sense to deliver certain weapons in a certain context. So the fact that these Gepard tanks, which are not from the German military themselves, they are currently with the former manufacturer, Klaus Maffei Wegmann, who will basically get them back into the shape so they can actually be used in combat. Um, they are due to be delivered, and Germany has agreed to join trainings on German soil. That's also quite a step forward, um, together with the United States. Um, so clearly, this is all taking place in Germany, but the fact that the United States has called dozens of countries to the table and that we saw a declaration from the US Defense Secretary that nobody will leave without a commitment to Ukraine somewhat set the tone here. So that's why the timing isn't that terribly surprising. And um, the outcome is something that, if you'd asked me three days ago, it really didn't look like this was going to happen. Um, 
she made clear that, you know, we, Germany has been supporting Ukraine since day one, as you said, talking with partners. How great was the criticism? Because there, there was, of course, criticism of Germany for just simply not doing enough. How great was this political pressure? Well, um, from within, it was great because it actually reached the other two coalition parties who are currently in government with Olaf Scholz. Um, that those inhibitions, particularly the Social Democrats, were having the concern of actually becoming a part party to the war um, was something that simply no longer would, was taken even within the coalition as reason enough not to hand over those heavy weapons. Externally, the pressure had been mounting hugely, not just from Ukraine, who would be the natural party to call for more support, also from Poland, particularly the Baltic states. This all against the backdrop that those countries are also calling for a ban, uh, effectively an embargo on of oil and gas um, trade with Russia, basically Europe being such a, a customer, Germany, the entire EU being highly reliant. Um, that is seen as a red line that the German government still isn't willing to cross. But the feeling was mounting that the very least German government should be doing is to uh, hand over whatever it has. And again, this is not something that the German Bundeswehr, the army has somewhere stored. This is with private companies and it's subject to licensing. And this is also where the criticism really was mounting that there was no free license um, against what actually was announced by Robert Habeck, who's the trade minister, cl trade and climate minister, who is responsible for that, for any weapons available to actually be sent Ukraine's way. This seems to be changing as we speak here right now. I would expect this only to be the beginning um, because it is such a, a shift in the view Germany takes uh, and the caution it has displayed and the reasoning it has given over those past couple of weeks where that pressure had been mounting. You said this is the beginning. Now, she did say, you know, we will talk to allies about what more we can do. How far, how far will this go? <laughs> well, for now, we will see German tanks being delivered to Ukraine, which was something that the government was still adamantly against un until a few days ago. The call from the US um, secretary was quite clear to hand over everything, to, to, to basically do absolutely everything to meet those near-term needs um, for defence of Ukraine. So um, this is a process, as we, as we also heard um, Minister Lamprecht there, there are continuous consultations. Clearly, Germany isn't now going to hand over anything possible because that debate has not gone away here in Germany. But there was also significant pressure from within Parliament, and here we actually expect a decision this Thursday calling for more weapons to be sent. So I would expect this to be a breakthrough moment um, and a list that has just been opened in terms of heavy weapons that will get longer as we keep talking about this, I'm sure, of the, couple, the next couple of weeks. How, how unified is German politics about what is happening here? How much pushback is there within, uh, within the government or within other political parties to, to, to what is developing here? Well, interestingly, it's only the left party um, and it is the Social Democrats who are completely, and actually the far-right AFD, who are against delivering mm -hmm. weapons. Within the government, there is... The, 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 the coalition does protest a bit too much that there is no unity. Um, we've heard um, two key politicians, defence politicians um, from the Free Democrats, uh, published an article today saying we are already in the midst of a hybrid war. Mm -hmm. This is already a war. And this is sounding more and more like what Ukraine actually is telling its neighbours, um, that the line is already very much blurred. Hence that the concern of actually entering the war as a party, which legally, according to um, the German legal expert, but also international expert, is, does not happen if you hand over weapons. But if Moscow interpre interprets it that way, we are in greater danger of World War Three. Moscow knows that and is clearly also playing on that fear. So that's where German uh, Politics is currently shifting, but it's part of the Western bloc, it's part of NATO, it's part of a Western alliance clearly led by the United States. So there's a question, how much difference will it make if you have more misgivings than other Western allied partners in what is this amounting confrontation between Russia and the West? We will have to leave it there. Michaela Kufner, Chief Political Editor, thank you so much.
On to other news now, and Elon Musk is promising a more lenient touch to policing content on Twitter after the social media company accepted his $44 billion takeover bid. Now, Musk is best known as the CEO of Tesla Electric Cars, but he describes himself as a free speech fundamentalist. He's pledged 